Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you're all doing well, self-isolating, keeping clean, keeping yourself busy in these troubling times. Welcome to today's Chelsea News video, where I'm going to be talking about some, quite a lot of different stuff actually, interesting stuff, a few things regarding fake news. I can't really do a Donald Trump accent, sadly. Or maybe that's not a sad thing. Anyway, Emerson Palmieri is angry about fake news. Tammy Abraham is happy about the fake news being dissolved. And also I want to talk about Pedro Rodriguez who is done at Chelsea out here. He's done out here, bruv. What an amazing career Pedro Rodriguez has had. But he has confirmed that he is done. Done. So some really cool stuff to talk about today and I'm looking forward to it But I want to take a quick moment to thank you there Yes, you well to thank all of you just for watching my content But also to thank the people who have donated to my fundraiser for the NHS I really really I'm so humbled by the quick response. It's already been about 500 pounds in the first couple of days um, It's the chance to give back in a time of crisis and at the end of the campaign I'm gonna give out a Chelsea shirt to a random donator so I'm going to put the link in the top of the description if you do want to extend your kindness it can be as little as whatever please do consider donating and when you donate leave your Twitter handle as a message and I could choose you to win a Chelsea shirt thank you all right let's get into the video well let's start with the big man himself or well the, the, the little man Pedro <laughs> Pedro right snubbed Man United to come to Chelsea good start it's a good start there really isn't it another one of those players we snatched away from the Manx. What a player, man. He was never like, I don't know, the superstar name at Barcelona, but he was like a sort of ever-present. Is this light gonna look weird in the post-production? Sorry, I've just got sunlight coming through my curtains in my studio. Yeah, so Pedro. What a player, man. 25 major honours. I'm gonna put that on the screen now, everything he's won. I think very few have won, or like, he might even be the only person that's won every type of trophy, including a domestic title, Europa League, Champions League, World Cup, European Championships. If he's not the only one, he's one of very few that have done every single thing out there. He's won a lot. He's actually been quite a really reliable performer for Chelsea Football Club throughout the years as well since he's arrived. Even though he's not always been scoring goals, I think he has like a goal contribution over one every three games. So he's chipping in. Remember he scored some big goals as well, or some outside the box bangers against Tottenham and stuff like that. Important goals, it, uh, that season under Conte where we had Hazard, Pedro and um, Diego Costa up front because it was interesting wasn't it? Willian and Pedro had swapped places but that season it was Pedro like easily over Willian like he was the much more much more of a goal threat on the counter attack than Willian and you know running in behind he was superb he scored a bunch of goals and uh, there was a time when you know, it was the PhD Pedro Hazard Diego that was like do we when they were in form it was like wait do we have the best front three in Europe right now? Do you remember when they were just tearing teams apart, scoring loads of goals? Pedro has been excellent for Chelsea. He's got a wicked work rate, really industrious. We've seen that even this season for Frank Lampard, tracking back, making tackles, always pressing. Dude is in his 30s. Superb. So we knew his contract is up in the summer, but he's recently come out and said, you know what? Yeah, I'm terminating my contract. Now, I'm, I can read this as two things. You can read this as like, yeah, it is done in the summer. Or you can read that as, look, I'm done now, man. I know he's really concerned of what's going on in Spain and he's donated loads of money to like hospitals and stuff. I think it might be a case of, even if this Premier League campaign starts up again, I'm done, man. I'm not fit. Um, go on without me. I have a feeling it means that. But um, regardless, I think it's time to say thank you and goodbye to Pedro. He's been an excellent servant, he's won a bunch of stuff with us, and great signing ultimately. Right, before we talk about the Tammy Abraham situation, the wage demands, and also what I think, maybe I want to add some stuff on the striker situation at the end, let's talk about Emerson Palmieri. Hasn't played in a long, long time. Such a weird story, Emerson at Chelsea, was our best player at the beginning of this season, at the, you know, the very beginning of this season, it looks like one of the best left backs in the Premier League at the end of last season, combined very well with Loftus-Cheek and Hazard on that left flank, obviously since he's not been playing with either, so there's been no chemistry there, but that didn't stop him from starting a wicked campaign under Frank Lampard, before he just sort of just fell off and disappeared. Now, Loads of news stories came out that he was angry with Frank Lampard's training regime and that's the reason why he wants out. Maybe there's like animosity between the two. But he went through on his Instagram screenshotting all these stories and put them 
on his Instagram story saying fake. Now I'm gonna put them on the screen now. He did a few Spanish ones as well, or like, sorry, Italian ones, I think. Portuguese maybe. But um, yeah, so essentially he's saying fake news across all these things. Uh, and then essentially says afterwards that there's no problem here. I don't know why these people are posting these stories. Obviously someone's made something up and the rest have followed and everything's cool. The truth is that may be true, but the truth also is everything's probably not cool. You've become a third choice left back. You started the season like a bad man. I really can't get my head around this because he was magnificent. And then just, and the thing is, it's not like everyone was angry with Frank Lampard for dropping Emerson. Everyone sort of got it. It made sense. So there's no like disagreement really with the manager. It was just like, yeah, he has to be dropped. And I can't really work out why. He just his form just sort of dissolved everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Marcus Alonso went above him as a conventional left back. You know you've got problems when that's happening. And even Aspi Laqueta moving back over there as well as senior player. So really does look like he's done and I guess perhaps the move to uh, Juventus Juventus and if like you know Alonso does go to Inter to meet up with Conte it is a shame because there is a player in Emerson but I think everyone's sort of just accepted now how Chelsea are going to buy a new first choice conventional left back maybe a push keep Alonso as a different option but probably sell Alonso as well and as we all know I did a video on it Ian Matson has signed a new professional contract and he's backing himself to be in the first team next season not only that but potentially by the end of next season challenging for the first team spot so that's positive you know competition Dynamism, what Lampard wants, superb. Right, let's talk about Tammy, 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 Tammy Abraham. Now, I did a video on why his alleged 180k a week uh, contract demands would still make financial sense with Chelsea. I broke down the wage structure, wage structure amortization, and how clubs view it, and if they were to replace him, even with a player that's you know worse than him, they'd be much uh, more worse off financially. Um, but it turns out these contract demands that, by the way, they would have been reasonable by an agent regardless. They look at, you know, Marcus Rashford on 200k a week, rising to 300k a week, scored less goals than Tammy Abraham from open play. Granted, he's more settled than the United team, but the reason why he gets those wages is for the same reasons that I explained in this video or that old video rather, but the truth is, apparently it's nonsense. Reputable journalist with strong connections to Chelsea Football Club, Matt Law, shut this down. He said, contrary to reports, Abraham has not demanded 180k a week salary or asked to be made the highest earner at the club. Mm. This quote was also quoted in a Chelsea Instagram post, not official. Tammy Abraham himself commented, basically affirming that fine some true news kind of thing. This is a nonsense. Why has this gone around the newspapers? To be honest, I'm surprised he didn't speak out sooner, but apparently he's just been concentrating on his training and not negotiating the contract. So there you go. Even though I broke down financially why these deals do happen, perhaps he hasn't asked for anything. Maybe he does intend for asking that much. Maybe not. Truth is, he's got two years left. He's probably more likely waiting to see what Chelsea Football Club do in relation to buying another striker just to know where he stands. And I, like many other Chelsea fans, believe Chelsea will buy a striker in the summer. Obviously, they've looked at a few different players. Moussa Dembele was a sort of big name that was being banded around. I'm not overly excited by him. I know a lot of you in the comments tell me you really do rate him. I've watched him a couple of times. And I thought he had a few good moments, but personally, if available, I would like to see Luke Jovic go to Chelsea on a loan deal first. Because for me, in my head, I see Luke Jovic as a more elite player with a higher ceiling and he would cost less money than Moussa Dembele. You have to think Luke Jovic's value has dipped a little bit since going to Man United rather than going up because he was a hot shot striker property at Frankfurt, scored loads of goals, Real Madrid got him for like what 50 or pre 60 million pounds. You'd think Chelsea would get him for that or less at this point and they want and uh, Leon want like 80 million for Moussa Dembele. I know granted what's going on in the world right now would dictate a big shift in the transfer market and nothing will really make sense until we see what happens if indeed the transfer window opens. But I like the idea of Chelsea's open relationship with Real Madrid creating another one of these deals like Mateo Kovacic for a loan deal for Luka Jovic. You say, look, loan him for a year, 
pay his wages, maybe a little bit of a loan fee, and if you dig it at the end, you can buy him for 50 million pounds. Do you see what I mean? Something like that would be really, really good. So it would be, that would kind of make sense on loads of levels with the loan fee nearly making up to what they bought him, Chelsea paying his wages, you know, Zidane came in, didn't fancy him, all that kind of gear. So it does all sort of make sense when you put it together. Anyway, I'm keen to get everyone's thoughts on this subject. Do talk about Tammy Abraham. What do you think he will perform like next season? Who do you think Chelsea should bring in as another striker? Would he start over Tammy? Would he play alongside Tammy? Would he rotate with Tammy? What do you think about Pedro Rodriguez's... Rodriguez... De de? Pedro Rodriguez... That is so hard. Pedro Rodriguez... Yeah, what do you think of his time at Chelsea Football Club? Let me know, get down in the comments section below. And also, the anomaly of Emerson, man. What happened to him? I think everyone's cool for him to leave, but why? What happened? It's like some sort of, he was abducted by aliens and became a different player. Get in the comments section below, express yourself. Follow me on Instagram and the socials, at Football Yannick. Enjoy the football that's not going on. Stay safe, stay inside, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby